So I grew up in the in London in the UK and I was brought up um, really with a set of core principles around engaging in social justice, environmental justice initiatives. I was brought up as part of the Baha'i faith and there's a lot of emphasis in the Baha'i faith around putting one's faith into action and caring for the environment and as I came to the US and did my undergraduate and graduate studies at Stanford just got more and more invested in the social entrepreneurship and impact investing ecosystems and worked with the, the Calvert funds on investing into socially responsible businesses and funds, some in the environmental space, but also more, more broadly uh, between the US and, and China, and then helped to build a coalition of foundations that were divesting from fossil fuels and investing in new economy solutions and kept on seeing how disconnected so many of the funders and companies that we were working with were from the communities in which they were looking at investing in. And so about seven years ago, co-founded Impact Experience, really with the goal of creating intentional spaces to you know, build bridges between investors, entrepreneurs, and communities that have been overlooked and underestimated. So that's been a big part of the focus over the last seven years. And then more recently have been doing some work with One Planet Group to help to lead some of their investments and uh, their mergers and acquisitions work uh, also all with a values alignment and um, particularly on the investment side. With One Planet we make early stage investments into businesses that are seeking to you know, have a positive impact in the world and a pretty broad range of, of sectors but all at the seed stage. Uh, we've been making a number of investments recently in the healthcare space and um, future of mobility, education, technology, media and marketplaces are some of the areas that we invest in. And then with Impact Experience, a, a lot of our work actually is at the intersection of climate and racial justice. Certainly the racial justice work runs throughout all of the work that we're engaged in and kind of providing spaces for groups to become more aware of the biases and to look at mechanisms for unlocking more capital into women and people of color run businesses and funds is certainly a core aspect of, of much of our work. In, for example, places like West Virginia that have been reliant upon the fossil fuel industry, looking at in that transition from relying upon fossil fuels to more of a reliance on new economy solutions, how to ensure that communities that have been really reliant upon the fossil fuel industry aren't left behind in that process. And so through our work with Impact Experience, we've worked now in over 30 communities and engaged over 2,500 people. And um, just seeing the ripples of impact both within the organizations and the communities that people are part of is, um, you know, it's been a really exciting aspect of the work. So historically, a lot of the large financial institutions were more skeptical about impact investing and weren't sure that it should be something that should be prioritized. And it's been really powerful over the last five and 10 years to see more and more of these institutions prioritizing and seeing the importance of having aspects of their work be focused on more social investing. And I think one of the ex other exciting kind of shifts um, is seeing with the intergenerational wealth transfer that's taking place more and more of a, an interest from the next generation in ensuring that there's an alignment between values and investing. And uh, you know that's exciting, I think, as part of this mainstreaming of impact investing to have you know, more and more of those um, kind of opportunities for, for that to take place. A big part of this is around energy sources. So I have a, an increasing number of friends who are either uh, powering their homes with community solar or broader residential solar. So looking at um, just literally what are the main energy sources that are used in one's home. And particularly if people are, have the flexibility or are building a home from scratch or um, you know, have a choice of where one uh, wants to live, like really thinking about even what are the materials that are used in the building of a home, like having set up to, to compost as well as recycle, like what are the light bulbs that are being used that are more energy efficient light bulbs. So um, it's a powerful mechanism around this sort of think global, act local, that to really be able to, um, through these small decisions that we make in our own homes on a daily basis, uh, to be able to kind of see the demonstrable impact of that. Thank you.